What's going on, everybody? Um, what's up, Topher, Wickdor, Mona, Izette? Um, how is everyone doing? Tainer, let's be honest, there's still room for downside. No need to sell Hopium. Uh, I don't think I'm doing that at all. I actually have plenty of short scenarios that uh, we're going to talk about. Um, that we're going to talk about shortly. So, yeah, I, w I wouldn't say I'm uh, selling Hopium. I do think it makes sense to bounce a little bit, but it, it doesn't have to at all. What's up, JC? What's up, Charlie? What's up, AJ, Furcan, Bitcoin, Revolution, Economy, I think. The Spaniardo, what's up, brother? Sell us Hopium. <laughs> you guys need me to sell you some Hopium? I'll take this off now that I'm talking. I just do that when the mic's muted so people know I'm not going to be talking, but then there's still people in the chat who uh, tell me the mic isn't working, so... It is what it is. <clears throat> Hi from Uruguay. How's it going, man? London got you. All right, we'll give people uh, two more minutes to get in, and then uh, and then we'll get started. You guys, uh, you guys buying any apes? You like my apes? <laughs> My uh, profile picture apes. I think they're pretty fun. What's up, Maine? How you doing, homie? We need to get a uh, a, a tag team stream on the uh, on the schedule again soon. Forrest Gaines, what's happening? What's up, Brennan? Josh. We got 69 viewers, that's perfect. David, or Davide, what's going on? All right, one more minute and we will jump into it. All right, let's get started, boys. <clears throat> candle just closed. We have one hour left for this daily candle. Um, so we had this, this sweep into daily demand. You can draw it with the bodies or the wicks, whatever you want. Technically, there's demand in the body and the wick, but more in the body. So that's kind of the important part, but it's interesting to see how well... Um, how that the bottom of that wick still held um, so that's good to see um, so we had another dump <laughs> it's funny because I was literally comparing these two scenarios but then still talked myself into a long here instead of shorting it it just goes to show uh, analysis does not make you a good trader because where was it right here had this drawn out when we put in this green candle. Oh well, it happens. Um, but we're seeing a pretty good daily candle be put in here. I mean, this is kind of what you would want to see. Um, it doesn't mean we can't have a wick up and then another leg down. I definitely think that's possible. But I think this candle looks good for possible relief uh, coming up. Uh, I don't know exactly how high it's going to go. I've got my eyes on a few levels that we will talk about shortly. Um, but I do think this has the makings for a potential bottom. I was talking to one of my friends earlier and I was basically saying, if this does end up being the bottom, and let's say we bounce up to 60K from here, like in hindsight, it's just going to look so obvious. We got a sweep into support this cluster, like whatever, 
however you want to define this level in general. This is where we stalled and consolidated for a bit before pushing up and making a new all-time high. So this is a significant area. Um, like I said, it's hard to pinpoint the exact level that we would bounce from or whatever. Um, but we're seeing buyers finally step in. You know, I would have wanted to see it move a little quicker. Like we wicked into it a few times, grinded down, had a nice little pop, but then grinded back down. Typically with really strong demand, I wanna see a really strong reaction, like if this pushed right away, but it's not the end of the world. I don't wanna to be too nitpicky with that. Um, let me zoom back out a little bit. So this definitely has the makings to be a possible bottom, but I'm not ready to say the bottom is in quite yet. So I guess we'll start with where would I be looking if this is not the bottom? Um, I still think we could come back here. I don't think it'd be uh, ridiculous for us to leg down here, origin of this pump that originally made, uh, helped us break above 50, broke this 42K all time high. Um, I know people were kind of expecting this when we were having this drop, expecting it to go lower and fill in this gap or whatever you want to call it. Um, we didn't quite do that, so I do think um, getting a move down there later is definitely a possibility. Um, but with the selling that we've seen just in the last, how many days is this? Three, six, seven, eight days. Like you'd expect something like this for a couple days and then go down for the next leg. So I would say the main, the main thing that I kind of think will happen will be a push up to either 56, 58, 60, and then we kind of grind back down. It doesn't need to actually go that low, but I, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards right now. But, you know, trading is not about predicting, it's more about reacting. So we'll lay out some scenarios and um, we execute based off of those. So that's one major level I'm watching. Um, if I zoom in a little more, we can go to a four hour chart. You could call it this entire level pretty much. This it was basically the last bit of down pressure before this pump right through all time highs. But I'm just gonna mark it with that line for right now. We don't need to uh, make it too busy on the screen. Um, I also think that this right here, some fresh demand right there, could be um, a level we bounce from if. I like it when these are a little lighter, like 15. I think that's a possible level we bounce from, this fresh demand right there, if this takes another leg down sooner. Um, but that's those are more my higher time frame thoughts. The daily looks pretty good. If we go down for another big leg, which I don't think happens quite yet, um, I'd be looking at the low 40s. Um, but for now, I think we should see some relief. We don't have to, but I think we should. I think this range is really clean right here. This low of the wick to this high. I like this range because of how clean the mid range level has acted, but it's kind of a bummer because there are some discrepancies across exchanges. So for here, this wick is there, which I also, th also think is a pretty nice um, pivotal level. And if you're in a long, that's kind of the first area I would look to take a little profit. Um, the daily open and this wick line up right on top of each other so that adds a little bit of um, a little bit of confluence to um, that low. But yeah, so I mean here you can see this low is right around 50k. On Bybit it's right around 51.7, which nice job Bybit for uh, managing the liquidations there. Coinbase, 51.2. Um, and let's see, on BitMEX, it was 50,900. So big discrepancies all over the board. You could say right now, this level on BitMEX is kind of capping price because we can't break through that. Or you could say, we already broke through that level and it's support now. 
or you could say we haven't even gotten to that level yet. So um, that part is a little bit of a bummer and that's like when you need to use um, more intuition or like it, it isn't as cut and dry as most things because um, the price levels are just different. But let's go back to this other chart we were talking about. For right now, I do think this looks pretty good. One reason I think the wick here makes sense, um, I mean, not really makes sense, but just adds to, like this could easily be our range as well. And it's just retest the range low from there. But the reason I think this 50K level is important is because that was the low back here. And that is pretty consistent across exchanges. Um, and that level is one that we have just now flipped above as long as we can hold it. So we were able to push above that, retested it here, and for now we're starting to push away. Um, not completely convinced yet, but um, we are seeing some good signs. And you can also see, held this support there, buyers stepped in right here on this candle. You can see that green one right there. And then immediate resistance twice now we flipped it. So we could be seeing a lower time frame SR flip around this higher time frame level. Um, but it's a little it's a little too early for me to say with certainty that the low is in. Um, if you're in a long, like I said, daily open, I would probably look to trim some off. Um, and then this SR level if you want to call that the range low, or if we're using this range, then the mid range. But in general, this mid 53s, um, I would say is a target for longs. And then lastly, 57.6. This is also Monday's high from this week. So if we do start trending up here, maybe consolidate a bit and then sweep that high, I think that's a great time to hedge or get short um, just because like we could bounce up to 58, 59K and still um, be looking more bearish overall. Not necessarily that it has to go back down, but just that we've, we've kind of broken some structure on the higher time frame. Like this was our higher low before this and now we've completely nuked straight through that. It doesn't mean we can't recover, but for right now, I think that means um, you can lean towards some hedges or shorts when we get to resistance. Like if this downtrend is gonna continue, I think either we get rejected right here because you can see that was the support this entire time, or we wick up here. And then once you break back below this level, then you can get short, maybe just targeting here or maybe it goes below into this demand around 45 or all the way down to 41. So Bitcoin is at a pretty pivotal level and what happens next will dictate what we do. Um, as far as some trades that you'd be able to enter from this, um, <clears throat> if we flip the daily open, I would look for a long within this section right there from 51.7 to 53.8, 53 53.9. 53 um, and then same thing with this mid range. If we can get above this, you look for a long from 53.9 to 57.6. So we're just gonna play this in sections, but I would say um, it would probably be best to continue to remain a little bit cautious for now. Um, we have seen a ton of relentless selling, but that doesn't mean it uh, it can't keep going. I wouldn't wanna be insanely long here thinking like, oh, there's just no way it can keep going down. It's not gonna keep dropping because uh, that's exactly how you lose a bunch of money. Markets can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. So like, does it make sense for us to bounce here first before going down, if we're gonna have more downside. Yeah, it, that makes more sense to me because I think a lot of people are piling into shorts now um, and I wouldn't be surprised if we punish the late shorters. However, it wouldn't be 
outrageous for us to leg straight down from here again. So we kind of have to just be patient, take it level to level on some lower time frames. But the fact that we are back above this low makes me think we push up into this mid range at 54K. And like I said, that's something that's consistent across exchanges. We're above this low. So I think we push up into this general SR region. And if the downtrend is going to continue, we go down from there. We either could push up, sweep these highs and go back down. Or if we can hold above this consolidation that made us make there that pushed us down to make this new low, if we can flip that and stay above, then I think we would push up from there. And then we're kind of in the clear again. But those are the uh, more near term thoughts on Bitcoin. We can look at the uh, CME futures. I'm sure a lot of people want to talk about the gaps. Um, <clears throat> we had one here that just got filled right there. And I guess that one technically got filled. The, the gap that everyone's watching is this right here. So could we go up, fill that, come back down and screw everyone and go to like 40? Yeah, we could, but uh, not necessarily the main scenario I'm watching. And just because there's a gap doesn't mean it has to be filled. Um, I would just say it's good to be aware of them, but um, it's not like price can't dump further without filling a gap. Like historically, does Bitcoin usually fill these gaps? Yes, it does. But are you going to take a long right here because you think it's going to fill that? Because if your investment thesis or your trade thesis is that it's going to fill that gap, like maybe it does fill the gap, but how are you going to take that trade? Because it could just do this and then you'd be stopped out. It still filled the gap, so you'd be right. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the problem I have with people saying it has to fill a gap or whatever, but it is what it is. Um, I'm trying to see if there are any other levels I wanted to bring up. Yeah. So plain and simply, we were able to flip above 50.5 so far. If we can hold that, I'm looking at 51.7. If we flip that, I think you take a long from here to Monday's low slash this general SR level, 53.8, something like that. And then if we can get back within Monday's range and also hold this SR, then I'd be looking for another push up to the highs at 57.7, 57.8, whatever. And then a uh, quarterly open is at 58.8. So that's another level for us to keep our eyes on. Does that make sense, everybody? Let me catch up with the chat really quick. I don't remember how far I missed off. Right off the bat, what are the taxes like in Germany? They're based off income tax. Uh, what's up, Simi, Simi Chris? Um, Kazawi, first time here on YouTube, welcome. Blake, what's going on? Hassan, what's up, man? Uh, Wonder Woman, hello. Jerry Boone, what's going on? Mark, what's up, brother? Um, yeah, Mark knows the taxes in Germany too. Do you think CME gaps actually make a big impact? I think they get filled, you just never know when they're going to. So 50-50 then, percent confidence in levels. I think that is pretty impossible to quantify. I, I don't, like I, I could spit out a random number, but it doesn't mean anything. 42, 60, set, like there's, there's no way of knowing really. We just plan for scenarios and execute based on what happens. I can't say we are 100% going up here and then getting rejected there. I have no idea. But if we go up there and then start to get rejected and I get a setup to go short, I'm going to take it. It doesn't mean I knew we were going to get rejected there, but we just play the, uh, play the charts um, level to level. 
Um, yes, very clear. Thank you. Perfect. What's up, Crypto Seneca? What's up, Trader Reno? Thanks for being here, man. You've been posting some super clean charts on Twitter recently, so keep it up. Um, do I think it's ruined the momentum the bull run had going? No, I don't think so. Yeah, we'll cover Seoul. I, I don't think we have put a cycle top in. Um, I don't even think we're that close to putting a cycle top in yet. I think all the on-chain analytics are still really bullish. I think big players are still buying and they are holding. They are moving their funds off of exchanges and just sitting on their Bitcoin. Um, so that also makes me think that the, um, what should we call it? That the bull run isn't like over or whatever. Weekly breaker. People are talking about the weekly breaker. Oh, I forgot to zoom out to the weekly time frame, but if if we do keep dipping, this consolidation right here, I know that's a huge level, but that would be a pretty killer long. And I know we were talking about wicking or closing this gap right here into this level. But I definitely think we could like wick below this and then I, w you, I think we would see a super strong reaction if we touched anything below 40K. The like few thousand dollars of buyback in, in minutes. Get some likes on the stream for the man cause. Appreciate you Trader Reno. Yeah, if you guys could like the video, that would be awesome. Helps with the YouTube algo or however they do it. I don't even know how to grow a YouTube channel. I just stream. All right, which, uh, yeah. Weekly doesn't look too bad. I mean, when you zoom out, it kind of just looks like we're consolidating in this greater region, but obviously that's a huge range. Um, read a couple more messages and then we'll look at some other, uh, some other charts. Um, also, I forgot to do this at the very beginning, but shout out to my sponsor, Bybit. Thanks to them, I can bring you guys this content completely for free. Um, and if you appreciate it, the content, then I would appreciate you guys using the link in the description to make an account on Bybit and check them out. Over leverage quarterlies, wick to 35K on Binance. That is crazy, but I believe it. I mean, wh when there's less volume on some of those quarterly futures contracts than a couple really big sells and then some cascading liquidations can push things really far. Okay, Ethereum. Let's talk about Ethereum. Um, so this 2320, 2330, that's kind of the line in the sand that we were talking about last stream when we were up here. Um, basically, it was support resistance throughout this whole area. Resistance here, then we broke through it. Nice retest, kept going. We bounced from it again there, but obviously sell pressure was a bit too much, so we went all the way down. We're above that level right now, but um, I don't... Like I'm not super, I don't love this PA right here. Like obviously Ethereum's been bouncing pretty nicely, like from 2100 to 2342, that's what, like 14% or something like that. Not quite to the top almost. Um, but Ethereum still looks, it, it held up better than Bitcoin, obviously. Like if we look at the Bitcoin chart next to it, it took out the low from March 25th, whereas Ethereum didn't even, where is March 25th? Didn't even get close to this, right? Um, so that's good to see. We got back above Monday's high, which is also good. Um, as far as long setups though, I don't think the price action is too clean for long setups right now. Um, I think, where's the, uh, yeah, I thought the daily open was right there. But basically, we have this cluster right here, whatever you want to call it. It's supply because that's where we dumped from. Um, so <clears throat> a move into that 
I would look for rejection there. You could even look for a short if we get that. However, if we flip this level, then I think we'll, uh, we'll be good to move further up again. And ETH BTC is honestly looking super solid. Um, we talked about this in the last video. We have these main targets right here. Um, and I was expecting us to have a little bit of a rejection in this gray area. I think that was the daily supply. Yeah, daily supply before this sell off and we just did not get rejected there at all. We got nice impulsive move above it, retested it and held the support. So Ethereum looks really good. Might just consolidate for a bit before pushing up again, but it, it definitely feels good to have um, some of the spot portfolio in Ethereum because of how well it is holding up against Bitcoin. Like I know it's technically down on the day, but if you look the past week, like it's it's had a killer week. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say about ETH BTC. It's perfect to tap a breaker or sweep into the gap on the left would be efficient. PA. Yeah, I agree. It, it like it would be solid PA. Um, we'll we'll talk about some smaller alts later, guys. For right now, we'll cover some more of the uh, bigger coins. No way you know this hundred percent, but what do you think about bigger whales truly holding forever? Uh, some certainly have enough cash. Why wouldn't they just hold forever and buy more during a leg down? Yeah, it's a good question. And obviously we have no idea exactly what the the bigger players or whatever, what they're gonna do. I think if Bitcoin sees the kind of adoption that we think is possible, where Bitcoin becomes like a reserve currency or whatever like that, then yeah, I don't think you ever sell your Bitcoin unless you're trying to buy something. And those are like the same things you would spend dollars on. Like if you were selling Bitcoin to buy a house or to buy a car whatever it is. Um, but I think that's kind of the end game if we're right about this whole, uh, this whole crypto thing. Um, what's up, Gabe? I feel like longing ETH based on BTCTA is a valid option here. Um, I, like if you think Bitcoin's gonna go up from here, you could long Ethereum because of the ETH BTC strength, but it just becomes a little difficult with stop loss placement and your risk management. Cause like if I longed Ethereum right here, my stop loss would have to be there because I don't have like any clear levels um, here that would be like good for a stop loss. Cause we could come down here and then go up and that's still super bullish. But if you have your stop here or here, you'd get stopped out. So yes, I expect Ethereum to outperform if we do bounce. But for me, the setup would look or does look um, a little more clean on Bitcoin. Um, so let's see. This is pretty crazy. We swept the high with that wick and then came down took out any stops from in here from when we were grinding up um, I think the three day candle is the one that yeah it's just a oops it's just like a perfect Darth Maul candle just taking liquidity from both sides but when it does that like I I would lean towards more upside whether or not Ethereum continues up ETHUSD I think it holds up better than Bitcoin if it drops and if it goes up, it probably outperforms. And that's all thanks to how bullish that ETH BTC chart looks. So, um, what does EIP 1559 mean for ETH? I honestly don't know. I don't, uh, I don't keep up enough with most, uh, with most fundamental things like that. I'll, uh, I'll look into it when we get closer, but I, I haven't really, uh, dug deep into, into what it is. So now we're getting closer to 30 minutes till the daily close. Um, this four hour candle is fine. We had a nice retest of that low and it's pushed up a little bit from there. Um, 
I think this could, like maybe we push up till the daily close, set our low of the day in early, and then push up from there or something. We could tag that down there and um, take out these lows. But like I said, I don't, I don't think it's the clearest. Like this, this SR flip was pretty clear to me. Support, resistance, resistance, and then this retest right now. Um, however, you probably need your stop loss like here or here or there, something like that. I wouldn't want it anywhere in here in case this does wick down and then end up getting back above. Um, but this was a pretty nice SR flip. I guess you could have longed that. Um, but unless you're long from earlier down here, I think it's best to probably wait it out and see what happens with Bitcoin. So Ethereum's getting a nice little push from this level too. Um, I think it makes sense to push up into at least this supply. Maybe that will give us a rejection, um, but I wouldn't enter any positions right here. Yeah, from what I've heard, the EIP 1559 is bullish, but okay, so it makes Ethereum deflationary by burning most of the fees paid and reduce supply, staking, cheaper to use. How does that have an impact on everything else? Generally positive. Yeah, I would, I would agree. Those are, uh, those are some positives. Simon, what is your overall sentiment for the market? I feel like we've been talking about that for 30 minutes now. Not to sound mean, but that's kind of all we've talked about. I think we go up first and then possibly more down, but like no one, no one knows ever. No one knows with certainty what is ever going to happen, but we plan for scenarios and we execute. That's it. Um, let's look at Litecoin. I told you guys we'd look at Soul. So last, this is my other chart. Last stream, we looked at Litecoin. I haven't touched this chart since our last stream. We looked at Litecoin and it was lagging behind. And I said, I think a sweep into this supply above Monday's high would be a really nice short scenario. And that played out so well Unfortunately, I didn't even catch it, but uh, hey, if any of you guys caught that from the last stream, that was a pretty killer short. Like that could have hedged your entire trading account or made some nice money on that short. I am uh, I'm bummed I missed it. I was paying too much attention to Bitcoin and Ethereum, but that played out perfectly. So. That's basically a supply level in combination with Monday's range. We came up, took out Monday's high, broke back below, and then and then you guys know what happened next. So that was pretty spot on. Now I guess what, what happens next for Litecoin? We had this uh, SR level that we were talking about. It's held for a bunch of tests and Excuse me. It looks like we're going to close the daily candle above that. One thing that I do look like about Litecoin is that we have some really clear demand right here. Like that's a very obvious level. If you combine it with some fibs, I bet we get some nice confluence of the 0.62705, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, right in that region where that wick is. Um, and it looks like we're going to get back above our SR line. So I think. Litecoin probably would have been the easiest one to leave limits on because it was such a, a clear level, but obviously hindsight's 2020. We had these nice wicks right here that were some pretty uh, clear levels to put your stop loss if you were in a long from earlier. And so swept those really nice, pushing up, and now we're flipping this 237 level. Um, I probably wouldn't, like, I just need more structure to take a trade for the most part. So for me, I would rather see us push up here and then go down or something and then start going up because then I have this higher low to 
um, quantify my risk to put a stop like to have more clear stop loss placement because right now if I enter along like my invalidation has to be there um, but I do think even though the like weekends getting here we'll have a new Monday's range shortly and actually let me hide this really quick because I think I see something that would be a very nice range That looks pretty good, but it's okay. I think uh, Monday's range helps here. So Monday's range, we had this initial low, deviated from it, flipped it, and we retested and held that low like four times. So that's obviously a pretty pivotal level, and that's also where we stalled. So we have this consolidation right there where we paused for a little bit, before dumping again. So I'm gonna highlight that, basically here to here. We'll make that gray. Um, and so Litecoin, if we get a flip of that level, I'll look to play it back up just within this range. Like you could say this PA was choppy or you can say whatever you want about it, but you can trade ranges pretty well if you just trade based on the range extremes. So maybe we chop around here a little bit, but as soon as we get a break above that and a retest, you have Monday's low and you also have this SR level. Um, I think you could definitely take a long there targeting Monday's high. And I would try and put my stop at whatever the low is before breaking through that. So in this drawn out scenario, if we, I guess I don't really wanna draw on it. If we consolidate for a little bit, maybe dip down to this two, uh, 237 level and then push up, that's where your stop loss goes. It goes to the bottom of that dip before pushing up and breaking that resistance. So. That's kind of what I would be looking for on Litecoin. Nice little range play, targeting 282. If we break that, you're targeting 302. Um, so even though this PA compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum um, looks a little more messy, it gave us a very clean short opportunity and this would be a pretty nice long opportunity as well. Just check on these guys. I don't love that we didn't put a uh, put a low in on this hourly candle, but I can't have everything that I want. Just from my experience, those seem to get uh We usually put in a high and a low on a on a candle. It's kind of rare for it to just go straight in one direction immediately, but it's happened before. Like you can see. We didn't put a high in there and we went down. So, um, but yeah, I, I like to see it without that more often than not. Uh, so let's review some charts, some alts from last time. Um, if you guys have any questions or whatever, questions about anything we talked about so far, let me know. It's a good time to, uh, spam those in the chat and then I'll talk about some alts and then we might be able to do some requests around the end of the video. Also, let's try to uh, let's try to hit a hundred likes. We're at fifty. I think you guys can uh, easily push that up. So BCH last stream a couple days ago, we were it was this daily candle. I said it looks pretty unclear to me right then, but this is super nice SR. Um, 
if we dip into it, I did not leave limits, but um, that played out pretty freaking well. Um, daily demand right here, plus this SR, like that would have been a an awesome knife catch if I had this chart open when we were dipping. Um, I didn't, but it's good to see the analysis play out. Um, I think this is a pretty, these are some nice levels here now that we have. This mid range has been a pretty good SR. If we do pump from here, I would be looking for us to take out stops on all of these highs. As you can see, they were all lower highs, so there was never a wick to take out some stop losses. So if we pump, sweep all those, break back below the mid range, this is where I would look for a short back down. So that's one uh, pretty clear setup that I think you could take. Um, if you're not long already, I don't think it's worth longing it right here. But that would be a, a solid, solid setup. Dot, I don't think we talked about that too much. EOS, we'll look at that in a little. Link, this was our plan for Link. I think it'd be a good segment in in these streams if I kind of go over things that we were looking at in the previous stream to just see how it how it played out. Um, we were looking for a move down to Monday's range to target the weekly open again because we were drawing this when we were around here. Um, unfortunately, it took off right away without going down. If it pushed down a little further, we would have been able to get a nice trade out of it. Um, but it didn't, um, came down and kind of like retested Monday's low on this dump, but never really got much of a bid and it kind of just bled out further. Um, I don't, I mean, honestly, I, I don't love the price action ever after huge dumps like this. It kind of just always feels like we get these slow grind ups. And either it's gonna pop or it's gonna grind and then dump. That's how it feels like it always happens. Like if I go back to another big old dump we had with Bitcoin, like here, this one wasn't huge, but you just get a slow grind up and then it dumped again. Or after this one. After this dump from 56 to like 50, it's just a slow grind up. And it's hard to trade something like this. It just doesn't give as many setups, in my opinion. But it is what it is. Um, 20 minutes until the daily close, fellas. This hourly candle's looking pretty solid. Did we look at Uni? No, Litecoin, we talked about that. XRP. XRP, we were looking for it to break out of this diagonal and we wanted to get a retest of the weekly open to look for some longs to start rating all these highs. Um, but we rejected there and then nuked. So that setup never materialized. I was looking at this gray area to get long. Um, or we were talking about that as a possible spot. And I'm trying to see what time frame I drew that on. It wasn't weekly, was it three day? Okay, so that was three day demand, but if you drew it from the daily demand, I know that's an enormous level, but it didn't go through is what I'm trying to say. It didn't break that low. So th this demand held pretty well on Litecoin. I mean, sorry, on XRP, this general region. That doesn't mean it would have been something I would have been able to trade well because that was such a huge level. Like if you bid the top of it, then you had a 22% stop loss. I mean, I guess you could have, where was the, yeah. L little bit tough to play just because that level is so big, but good to see that hold. Um, XRP actually has a pretty nice possible setup. This is actually pretty clean. So we had we had this level right here, 
this dotted line at 1.17, pretty much equal lows. You had the low here, low here, low here. We swept all those on this candle, and if the selling pressure wasn't so relentless, like that would have been a beautiful sweep for more upside, but nothing could seem to uh, even bounce at all. Um, we flipped it. You can see this candle was a green candle. It tried to go break back through it, but that held as resistance, so pushed it back down. However, now that we know the significance of this level, if we can get a flip of it, whatever it's going to look like, you know, it's never as clean as the drawing, but basically move above and hold that 1.17, then I would expect us to to be trading back within this price range. So if we got that, I think you could look for some longs targeting 1.52. Get rid of that guy. Um, so XRP doesn't look too bad. That could be a, a decent setup there. 5,000 or 50,900. This keeps pushing up. Same with Ethereum a little bit. Let me draw this level on here. If Ethereum can flip this, I think it could be a nice long to at least 25, 30 and maybe all time highs. But I also think this is an important level. Like sometimes in crypto, we see price overshoot and then go back below it. And that can give some really nice setups. So for instance, if we spike up above all these highs here, and then wasn't there a little, yeah, so if we spike up between those highs there and then get a strong rejection and break back below this daily open and our gray SR cluster, whatever you want to call it, then I think the retest of that would be a really nice short with a stop loss at that high because then you have a way to define your risk um, because if this just goes up, or sorry, if it doesn't go through that level and just retests it, I guess you could try and play it super aggressively and have a stop loss there, but I wouldn't feel too comfortable doing that. You would need a stop loss somewhere way up here, but if you break through the level, however high it goes, you let it do its thing, whatever it wants to do up here, however high it wants to go, and then if it breaks down below that 2400, that's a clear short with defined risk. So. That's why those kind of setups can sometimes be very nice. Um, okay, I told you guys we would look at Soul. That's a classic that we uh, we track in this group, in this live stream. Um, where were we when we recorded last? Today's the 23rd, it was probably the 21st, somewhere around here. I think I had a range like this marked out. We're talking about ranges on ranges. Um, and I mean, Sol did super well. It's it's unbelievable how well this held up. And if you compare it with anything else, like if I throw a Bitcoin chart on here, something's wrong. Okay, that didn't work how I wanted it to. Anyway, you guys know what the Bitcoin chart looks like. Bitcoin nuked. It was like during this time, Soul was pumping, Soul was going up. Um, so Soul held held super well. I uh, a, a large portion of my spot portfolio is in Soul. I'm very confident in this project and the upside of it. I think it's still criminally underrated in terms of market cap. Um, so happy to see, excuse me, happy to see how well this held up. Um, but with this. Price action right there. I don't really see any clear setups at all. I thought this was a beautiful level. Um, I would have absolutely taken along there with a stop loss here if this came down further like the rest of the market. It didn't and so it's a little tough to play that. Let me see where Monday's range is. So we're back above Monday's high, which is good. Let me zoom in a little. This is getting messy. I think that one. Okay. That looks right. 
Get my session breaks. This one might be slightly lower. Let's see. The low there, 050 here. Oh, it's the same. Okay. Equal lows right there. Um, so you can see, wow, that's actually cleaner than I expected. Resistance here, flipped it to support, support, support. As soon as we closed below on this candle, retest it as resistance, resistance, resistance. It's kind of just been chopping around Monday's high, but it's been respecting it very well, especially on the closes. Like, look at that. Doesn't let it close through, doesn't let it close through, doesn't let it close through. Um, so that's pretty clean. Um, the retest of that technically could have been a long stop loss would have had to been there. So pretty wide, but soul showing a ton of strength. I probably won't have a trade to take on this um, until something else sets up until we get some fresh levels next week. Just because like for me, we kind of flipped the SR level that we already had earlier. So if you miss that, I would kind of need it to either flip, I mean, basically all time highs or form a new range somewhere in here. If it started consolidating for a bit, then you could look for like a sweep of that. But it, it's way too early to say that. Uh, so I don't see any day trading setups here for Seoul, but I'm very happy to see how well it held up during the dump and how well it continues to hold up. Um, what else do you guys want to see? We've got 11 minutes before the daily close. So we'll try and look at a couple other charts before that. Oh, I forgot to read the chat. Can I show my indicators on TradingView? I don't really use any. I mean, this shows me where some opens are. This shows me Monday's range, but that's pretty much all I use. Um, so yeah, that doesn't really help you much, but. But I'm more of a price action trader. So um, what do I feel is the most consistent time frame for mapping out ranges. Um, I don't think there is a certain time frame that's better than a different one because you're still seeing the price action zoomed in versus zoomed out. Like if I zoom out, I could say like, oh, this looks, well, I guess it looks better on the uh, other chart. I could say, oh, this looks like a really good range and I'm looking at that on a four hour chart. But if I look at a one hour chart, I see the same exact thing. Even if I zoom into a 15 minute, it's like this low to that high, mid range interacted super well. So because of that, I would say there isn't really a best time frame for, um, for ranges. How do you get the weekly open indicator? Uh, I mean, you don't really need an indicator for it. I'll show you how you can get it, but I think it's good to know how to do it manually. Up here, it shows the open, the high, the low, and the close of every single candle. So if you hover open, if you hover over any of these candles, you can see where that weekly open is. Or if you have your magnet on and you want the weekly open for our current candle, you just put a line at the open you can do whatever color you want and then it shows up. So that's a pretty easy way of doing it. Or there are plenty of people that you search through indicators. You can click on this, click on pretty much any of these will, will work. I think the one I have, if I uh, look at the code, it's by Mr. Sebastian C. So, but once again, it's not uh, necessary to have that. It just saves a little time. Uh, you want me to look at COPE? COPE, LINK. All right, LINK. They asked LINK first, so let me look at that. Uh, guys, the reality is with like all these alts or with most coins right now, 
Like we had big dumps and now we're in this grind up. So I can mark some higher time frame levels for you, but there aren't really lower time frame day trades that uh, I'd be taking right now. So I think this is a pretty clear SR level. Make that black a little thicker. Um, resistance here, 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 and right before the pump. We're closing above it, which is good. We've wicked through, which is like fine. But I think as long as we stay above that line, link is bullish. Like as long as we're trading outside of this price range, because we were stuck in this range for from February 10th till like April 10th. So like three months, two months, whatever. And price was, whether that was accumulation, whatever you want to call it, we were trading in that range for a really long time. We broke out of it. And now you want to see it stay above that range and then push up again. I don't want to see this break down below and then just start trading in this exact range for much longer because then like that's just not bullish. It already got its business done in that in that price area. So now you want to see it hold this I would say 34, 34 to 35. You want to see it hold those levels and start to start to push away. Um, so that's kind of what I see on link from a higher time frame perspective. But like this PA, like I'm just not I'm not too interested in trading that dot. This one doesn't have too much history, so let me, might have some levels on here still. Was that last week's Monday's range? Yeah, that's gotta be last week, okay. I'll delete that. I was super bullish on dot a couple weeks ago when we broke above this level and then we were able to hold above it. I can't remember during this candle, I was like, let's go. This is awesome. Turned out to just be a sweep, but um, yeah, dot doesn't, dot, you know how we were talking about link, how it's just, how it was stuck in that range or how it traded in this area for a really long time. Dot is kind of still, dang it. Dot is kind of still doing that. Dot has been, trading within this section since the beginning of February. And we it tried to break above, didn't have the strength, pushed back down. So I don't really love how DOT looks. I think it's an omega bullish long if it can get back above 42. Um, but right now, it I, I don't really want to touch this unless you just want to play the range, which you can do that too. But it, it makes me a little bit uncomfortable that we have these equal lows here now and almost that one makes me think it would want to take those. Um, it doesn't have to, but um, higher time frame bias right now for DOT would just be sideways, <laughs> which is kind of boring, I'm sure, to hear. Um, however, if it breaks above here, then I think it at least revisits this 42 top of the range. And if it breaks out of that, dot should be going back to uh, up only mode. So that's the good news. Oh no, guys, we're losing viewers. Am I being too boring? <clears throat> Let's see. Cope. What do you want to? I mean, I guess time, Cope is bullish. Cope the way the way it's held up, I think that looks good. Um, I know it kind of it looks it consolidated for a bit here, dip back below. We probably have a really clean range somewhere in here though. Yep. So it did consolidate here for a while, and that's okay. It took the highs a couple times, came down, tested the low, mid-range, super good reactions, traded outside the range for a little while during that dump, or actually it wasn't that dump, that was last week. 
Um, but then we got back in and here, that's the important part. Let me clean this up. We held the range low again. So now I expect Cope to continue to trade in this range. Um, I don't know for how long, but it might just range for like a month. But as soon as it breaks out above this range, it's back to a up only mode as well. BTC is looking good, boys, boys and girls. I don't know what, uh, probably mostly boys, but you never know. Um, we got two minutes, two and a half minutes. I can do one more chart request before we, uh, I'm trying to see if I missed any. I did cope. Take a, take a look at Adam. Yeah, I tweeted about Adam earlier today saying how well it's, uh, how well it's holding. Um, this ended up just being a fake out, but then we came and swept this low and it's rallying really nicely, holding above Monday's range well. And I think this idea still stands. This was from last stream and obviously it didn't play out because it nuked, but I think you break this downtrend line, get above Monday's high and uh, Adam will be looking good. Just go back to these. Ethereum getting a nice little move before the daily close. So this daily candle, guys, I know we have a minute left until this locks in. This is good. This is what you would want to see if this was a bottom. Um, so can't really ask for too much more from this, uh, from this daily candle. Yeah, I'll look at BNB in a sec after we get our daily close. Can't ask for too much more from this daily candle. Um, it looks pretty good, but for me to continue to be bullish, I need to see follow through. So if this is the bottom, I really wanna see a green candle next. And I mean, it doesn't need to be long-term bottom, but at least temporary. And I mean, I would want it to be pretty solid, but so we might make a wick early, retest this, and then, uh, oh, it's kind of hard to draw a candle when it uh, pulls your, if you do something like this, but moved over one spot, <laughs> it's kind of fun. That doesn't look right. I'm gonna delete that before it gets even more weird. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a strong daily candle. This is what we wanted to see from Bitcoin to be a little more confident that the low is in. And honestly, it's pretty insane that we are closing the daily candle only down 1.1% given how crazy this candle was. There we go. There we have it. You guys know what I always say, fade aggressive moves off the daily open. So Ideally, I mean, I wouldn't be mad if we put the low of the day in early, get a little dip in now, and then push up. But uh, as long as you guys remember the plans that we laid out earlier in the video, just playing at level to level, I think the other chart might have had more of the plans. Right now, we're looking to see a push up to 51.7. If we can get above that, we're looking for a push up to 53.8, get above that. We're looking for 57.7. And you can take long positions on the flips of these resistance and you can take a short if we reject at those. Yeah, I'm not a guy, that would be weird. I knew it wasn't all guys here. So I'm glad that it pays off that I say like, guys and girls or ladies and gentlemen because I know there's sometimes a lady in here. We need to be respectful of that. ETH BTC daily looks really good. Yeah, this is a that's a nice retest of this resistance and no complaints from me on that candle. Um, all right, I'll look at BNB because we were talk I said I would. Very, very bullish. This held up super well. Like lower time frame's a little choppy, but if you look at this, you wouldn't even know there was a major dump in the market because of how well it held up. 
Um, took out Monday's low right here, swept it, reclaimed, retest, and push away. That would have been a nice long opportunity, but there's only so much you can uh, watch while this is all happening. And what's this black level? I don't know what that was. I can delete this too. Monday's range is all you need right now. Let me see if any other relevant levels are close by. Not really. Um, but yeah, pretty good. We like we put in Monday's range early, deviated above it, a little deviation below. If we can get back above here, look for longs, and that's that's pretty much all she wrote about BNB. It's a it's a bullish chart though. Looks good. Solid recovery, but like I said, after these dumps, these funky grinds up just aren't the prettiest to trade. Doesn't give the most opportunities. That's okay, though. All right, guys. I think that is uh, pretty much it for the stream. Um, sorry if I didn't cover your coin. There were a couple coins that I've never really traded so I feel like it uh I wouldn't be able to offer too much expertise on them I mean a chart's a chart to a certain degree but I don't like coins that don't get too much volume because I think they move differently so um hope you guys enjoyed the video okay I will do one more look at RSR and this just looks range bound like uptrend overall but since March just range bound this is kind of a nice three drives down nice sweep there sweep there so You'd like to see it hold this and push away, um, but yeah, overall, this just looks like it's stuck in a range. Okay, I'll look at H bar. Yikes. Where does this have more history? Oh, H bar USDT. There we go. Whoa, look at that. I love running into old analysis. See how I did? Wow. Aced it. I would give that an A+. Plus. What do you guys think? Let's see. Not bad. All right, more recently, though. Uh, this doesn't look too crazy to me. Like, this was a pretty thin move right here, so it doesn't surprise me that it wicked down filled in a little bit of that um, this looks like a pretty uh, pretty clear range so I think if we get back above that like you can see how well this level held as SR I think you get back above that you can look for a uh, look for a long back up to the range high these were all marginally lower highs never really swept stop losses so that could be a good magnet for price all right i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video once again if you did please consider signing up for bybit using that link in the description just so the guys there know that uh know that it's worth it to sponsor me <laughs> and to uh, help me push out this content for you guys completely for free. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter and I will do my best to respond. Um, I've been getting more DMs than usual recently, so it's a little hard to uh, go through all the message requests all the time, but I do my best. Um, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. I'll probably tweet or post something in my Telegram talking about a schedule because um, this week was a little uh, different. I mean, I think I did Wednesday and Friday this week. I think usually we'll do Tuesday, Thursday, but I will, uh, 
I'll tweet something or post something in my Telegram to um, get that sorted out. But all the resources for me are down in the description, Twitter, Telegram. You can subscribe on YouTube if you enjoyed it. And then that link for Bybit, if you're interested, is also in the description. So um, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. And once again, really appreciate you tuning in. Have a great weekend.